Hello, everybody. I'm back again. I'm going to talk to you about uh, two fish that are often confused, and I'm going to show you how you can identify them. And then I'm going to show you how these fish are, are even though they look very similar, they're kind of like cousins. They, they have two different values into the uh, saltwater ecosystem, I guess you could say. So anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go briefly with the description. You, hopefully you can see this pretty well. The Jack Cravel is a very aggressive uh, fish, very, very strong fish. And uh, I'm going to kind of skip ahead real quick just so you understand this. The food value on this fish is it poor by most tastes. Most of the meat is dark red and of a strong flavor. So eh, it's not good to eat. And you can identify the, the, the bad food value fish by the two spots. You compare it to the Florida Pompano, you're not going to see the two, two black spots here. And the Jack Cravel has an extra fin up here. Can you see the difference here? You're going to see this. That's good. Anything football shaped like this without the these spots, that's good. So that's a thumbs up. That is a thumbs down. All right. You're, the, and this this is more football shaped. So that's a good good indicator. This is a little bit flatter. It does have some color down here. So does the Florida Pompano. It has some color here. But big indicators right here, right here compared to right here and right here. So, so that's that. So this, the food value on this is, uh, they, they say reputed to be the best. So they're telling you like, there's not a whole lot of fish that are gonna taste better than that one if you're gonna, you know, consume it. So now I'm gonna get on and talk about the, the description of the Jack Cravel and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the left column here. I'm going to tell you a little bit what's going on right here. And then I'm going to tell you a story um, of something I was able to observe uh, two times uh, quite a few years ago. So anyway, the other names, I, I always call it the Jack Cravel. They're listing the proper name here as Cravel Jack. So uh, it's okay. Most people in Southwest Florida, they just call them jacks. I, they just abbreviate everything down here, and it just rolls off the tongue a little bit quicker. To, everybody calls them jacks. Sometimes I, I call them Jack Ravel, and that's one of the other names that's listed right here. And uh, I, they also call them Cravalli. I, I've never really heard anybody call them that. I know that's one of their 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 other names, but. So anyway, the range for the, the Cravel Jack. All Florida and greater Antilles, rare in the Bahamas and smaller Caribbean islands. Okay, so that's kind of telling you where they're, they're prominent. So they're definitely all over Florida. And uh, the uh, habitat, the Cravel, they show up at any time in virtually all Florida waters, from the deep reefs to well up coastal rivers. Usually runs in schools, and the smaller individual fish, the larger, they like to school up larger. So the biggest jacks often cruise in pairs and usually found in or near major inlets and around offshore wrecks, reefs of both coasts, but may come into deep bays and canals where they chase mullet and often herd to prey against, herd the prey against seawalls. Okay, they're about known to be found in the Palm Beaches and Key West are particularly well-known areas for the, the Cravel. So what I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, this was a long time ago. It was probably, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago. My mom, this is the Imperial River right here. This, I called it the lagoon. This is a boat ramp for the Bonita Bay area. As you can tell, I, I did not do very well in Bob Ross class, but my mom, there was a couple of houses here. My mom had the fourth house in right on the Imperial River. Beautiful, beautiful place. And I would a lot of times just sit out here and fish. Off. This is like a boardwalk. And there were like little small dock areas. I There wasn't very many, I, maybe like 10 or less. But And then on this side, there were some docks. I didn't really draw that in here. But anyway, so I used to fish on this corner a lot. I did very well. I'd catch a lot of uh, snook, redfish, 
definitely a bunch of snapper and stuff like that. So I always had a blast fishing there. I'll never forget this one particular day. I was fishing with live shrimp and all of a sudden I hear all this ruckus and coming, this would be going up the river. They, they came into the, I call it the lagoon area and there was probably two to 300 of these big jacks and they were thrashing about making so much noise. And it was because they were making noise and all the, the mullet and stuff that they were chasing were just thrashing about. And then they just kind of like, the, the, the mullet had nowhere to go. They were trapped in this lagoon and, and the uh, Jack Ravel kind of knew that. So they were just, once they trapped them in here, they just had their little feast and their buffet and they took off. So I thought that was really cool. But when I first heard them and I looked over, there was all this thrashing. I never really knew because I was so new to Florida at the time. I threw a shrimp, and as soon as it hit the top of the water, I kid you not, it was like a millisecond. That fish was was on. It was off. It was, it, it that shrimp was gone to the races, and I had a nice big jack on there. And uh, so anyway, so I continued fishing. I'd say about twenty or thirty minutes later, they come back and do the same thing. They trap all this mullet and all, that, and they're just thrashing about. It was the coolest natural uh, sight of nature I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the, probably the second closest thing was when I was fishing on Bonita Beach, a, an osprey came down and, and snatched up a mullet and flew around and then flew right in front of my uh, my face by like six feet away to kind of like show it off like, hey, osprey one, G money zero. So it was kind of really cool. So those are two uh, cool natural events. You never know what you're going to see down here in Florida. But now I'm going to move on back to the description of the Jack Ravel. And then we'll move on to the Florida Pompano. So the uh, the description for the uh, Jack Ravel, they're saying it's a deep compressed body, blunt head with black spots on the rear of the gill cover. So the uh, hard scoots forward of sickle shaped tail. Let me try that again. Hard scoots forward of sickle shaped tail. Color usually yellowish with white undersides. So you can see what they're talking about right here. There's some white under here, there's some yellow, there's the spots. And so that, that's kind of, you know, one of the descriptions that they're telling you, I kind of already told you previously. So we're gonna move on to the size of the, the common sizes. So they're saying the size common at one pound or less or up to five or six pounds. Plentiful up to 12 pounds in most areas. Sometimes tops 20 pounds and can reach 50 pounds or even more. The world record is 58 pounds, 6 ounces. So now I need to clarify something. If you did not watch one of my previous videos when I was talking about the uh, black drum and the sheep's head, it comes from this publication right here, Sport Fish of Florida. So that is no longer in publication, but it's an excellent resource. And you can see why it's going to break it down like no no other book I've ever read or seen. And I'm very it's it's by Florida Sportsman. I don't know why it's no longer in publication, but this is a very very valuable resource. So when I'm telling you about a world record, it may not be accurate. A lot of times it'll tell you uh, a world record and also the Florida record. Sometimes the Florida record is also the world record. So. Um, the way I interpret this world record, 58 pounds, six ounces, I interpret that as that the Florida record was 58 pounds, six ounces. Usually if, it, if there's a world record and the Florida record is different, it's going to tell you. So I'm going to move on now. So the, uh, like I told you a little bit earlier, the food value on this is poor by most taste. Most of the, the meat, is a dark red and strong flavor. So, so this is no good. This is good over there with Florida Pompano. All right. But that meat is very, very good for shark fishing. It's, it's very bloody that a lot of fishermen will chunk that up and catch a ton of uh, all different types of sharks. So we're going to go on and talk about the game qualities. Few fish can out pull a Cravel of equal size. The fight is unspectacular, but dogged. The usual pattern being a, a first long run 
Jacks use their flat sides to a good advantage when waging a tug of war. So I, I don't know if I 100% agree with that analogy of that, but it is pretty accurate. When they hit, they're going to hit like a freight train. So they're going to fight. And um, it may be true that their first, you know, their first initial hit is going to be very, very aggressive and very, they're, they're going to, they're going to try and run and take off and spool you if they can. <clears throat> but they, I've caught many of these and they, they will fight you for a long time. So, um, so that's that. So now let's, uh, let's talk about the tackle and baits. Most baits are fairly small and caught on full range of light tackle by anglers seeking other game. If you target, target larger jacks, say 10 pounds or more, sturdy spinning, bait casting, and fly tackle should be used with lines no less than eight pound test. I, I tend to say you should use more than eight pound test because they will break you off. So I, I would do, I'd say 12 to 15 pound minimum so I, I kind of don't fully agree with that, but I'm reading what they put out in this publication uh, just from personal experience. I, I would use a stronger uh, test, maybe like a 30 or 40 pound leader. Um, all right. So now let me go back, find my spot. OK, here we go. Small jacks, such as those frequently encountered on shallow flats, will gulp down almost any sort of natural bait, live or dead, as well as the popular casting or fly rod lures. Big crevels, however, generally like their meals moving very fast to assure hookups. You have to use fresh and frisky live bait or retrieve your artificial lures rapidly, noisily, or both. Topwater plugs are good as they are fast whip jigs, as are fast whip jigs, excuse me. Uh, fly riders often have to work very hard stripping their streamers or poppers as fast as their elbows will move. So that's kind of telling you they're, they're, they're not real particular. I mean, they're going to, I know they will devour just about everything. And, and they, you know, any, any type of, like they, they told you, any type of live bait, dead bait, they'll eat mullet. You know, they love mullet and shrimp and all kinds of stuff like that. So anyway, we're going to talk about the fishing systems real quickly, and then we'll be done talking about the Jack Ravel fishing system, casting, trolling, drifting, and still fishing. So that's what they're telling you um, about about the Jack Ravel. And for the most part, I, I do agree with that. And, you know, I'm not here to debate, you know, professional authors or anything like that. The, the, the author of this publication is a guy named Vic Dunaway. He has many, many publications, and he does a great job. So now let's talk about the Florida Pompano. Okay, we're going to talk about everything on the right side, and then we're going to go down on this column here. <clears throat> so the Florida Pompano, it's also known as a Pompano. That's pretty much a no-brainer. And some people call it the Carolina Pompano. I've never really heard it called that, but maybe in Carolinas or wherever people refer to that as that fish, that may be where it, it you know, it, it is called that. So, um, now, the range for the Florida Pompano, it says all Florida coasts, all right? So the habitat, Florida anglers on both coasts catch most of their Pompano from the surf or from ocean piers. However, many are caught outside the beaches, also from the bays, mostly in or near channels that run through the flats. So that's kind of giving you an idea. So let's go and talk about the description uh, we already talked about it a little bit more, but I'm, I'm going to read what they have written down and then um, we can move on. So silvery overall with yellow on underside, dorsal fin, dorsal fin dark, other fins yellow, head gently rounded, no scutes forward of the tail. Pompano are often confused and small permit, excuse me, often confused with small permit of similar size but permit usually show a black blotch under the pectoral fin and their bodies are deeper. So <clears throat> that's going to be a future video that I'm going to do comparing the uh, Florida Pompano with the, uh, the permit. So I've already have the sheet ready to go. I'm going to give, show you a quick example, and then I'm going to be talking about that in a future video. <clears throat> so 
Now we're going to talk about the size of the Florida Pompano. It says averages one pound, fairly common at two pounds, and can grow up to eight pounds. World and Florida records, eight pounds, four ounces. So once again, this is an older publication, uh, probably at least 10 years old. So that may have changed over time. But that gives you a ballpark idea of like how, how big they can get. So now we're going to talk about the food value real quick. I think I touched on it earlier. And, it, and it's reputed to be the best. So I know I haven't been in a uh, seafood market for a while. But this used to sell for like $30 a pound. It's probably more now. I don't know. I, I, if I had to guess, it's probably around $35 a pound. So um, what I would tell a lot of sometimes, and please don't take this wrong if there's ladies out there or wives listening to this. I know sometimes they're generally like there seems to be, I know it's changing, in, in, you know, more in the modern era, but generally more men used to do a lot of fishing. So when I would get like a husband and wife that would come in, I'm, I'm talking like, 15, 10 years ago, whatever it was. Um, and the guy wants to buy, you know, $200 worth of rod and reels and tackle and all that. And I, I would kind of like just kind of like to help the guy out a little bit, but also to truly educate the wife, let them know, like, you know, if, if he catches, you know, three or four of these fish today, half of his investment is going to be paid for and you're going to be eating like a king and queen. So once you kind of relay it, relay it to things like that, and then, and then I, you know, I always had to throw in there, well, miss, how many pairs of shoes do you have, you know, in your closet? And then, you know, I started, started World War III right there. But anyway, I always try to help the guys out when I can. And now there's a lot more women fishing. So, it, you know, they're, they're more receptive to understanding that. So anyway, that's another thing. Like, like you used to be able to get like, what was it? Uh, a hundred shrimp for like thirty dollars. Now it's probably, if I had to guess, thirty-four or thirty-five dollars for a hundred shrimp, live shrimp. So that's another thing. So that would would be another thing. Like like a lot of times the you know one of the two, the husband or the wife, would kind of scoff about the price. So I just remind them once again. You know, I tell them the price of snapper. You know, you, you can't buy snook in a restaurant and tell them red fit, you know, and just you kind of have to sometimes correlate the, the the cost of the food versus the cost of the bait. And then you can realize that, you know, you're, you're going to be OK if you catch a couple fish. So now we're going to talk about the game qualities. So tops will outrace and out pull Jack Crevel of equal size. So they're saying the Florida Pompano is. Uh, more aggressive than the Jack Revelle. I, I know they are very aggressive. I don't know if that's 100% factual. In, in my opinion, I, I'd say they're pretty equal, but it, it's okay. I mean, I, I don't know if, you know, if, if you try and make logic to what they described earlier, this guy probably knows he's going to be table fair. This guy might not as fight as much because he knows he's probably going to be thrown back. So I'm kind of being, uh, making light of the situation there, but now we're going to talk about tackles and baits for the Florida Pompano. If fishing the surf or piers, use the lightest surf spinning tackle that will get your bait where you want it. In other situations, spinning or light bait casting tackle with six to eight pound test line gives maximum sport. By the far best natural bait is, is a lot the by far the best natural bait is a live sand flea, which is a sand crab. Um, but Pompano also will like bite, bite live shrimp, fiddler crabs, and uh, uh, varying types of uh, dead sand fleas, dead shrimp, clams, and cut squid. Pompano are ready strikers of artificial jigs. The Florida favorite being quarter ounce or half ounce models with short nylon skirts. Sorry, I kind of like got a little tongue tied there. Fly fishermen catch pompano with bonefish type flies that sink well, those with the epoxy heads or lead eyes. So that's kind of telling you some of the things that I do know for a fact that they do love the um, sand fleas like they were talking about. They do like, uh, they do like some cut bait, they like shrimp. And so it's, it, it's, those are some of the things. They're, they're not real, real particular. 
You really don't hit, sit, hear them hitting lures too much. But anyway, so the fishing systems, uh, they're, they're saying still fishing, casting, and drifting. So that's some of the things you can learn about these two fish. You can see that um, this one is a thumbs up. This one is a thumbs down. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about these, these two fish that look very similar. Um, this is pretty much an unregulated species. This is regulated. I do not know the current size limits because the regulations changed July 1st. I do not have the current issue. Anyway, I hope you, you know, enjoyed this little informative video about types of fish in Florida. Uh, I'll probably do one more like this uh, comparing the Florida Pompano I'll kind of zip through this since I've already talked about it today, but then show you what the, the Florida permit looks like and talk about its size and range and habitat, things of that nature. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. And once again, this is Jail Bait and Tackle Outdoors. And I refine, remind all my friends out there, always know your legal limits.